right, let's do basics. So your boat's gonna start out looking something like this. Anchor down, tails, I think you get the picture. Now of course we're gonna raise the anchor and set sail on your grand adventure, but I wanna make note of something first, and that's the fact that the boat can turn on its own without any wind in its sails or anything. I know it seems weird, a little counterintuitive, but trust me, it's important. And you're gonna set up point us northwest, and you're gonna wanna turn the wheel back before you actually get to where you're going, because there's always a delay on these sorts of things. Once you get moving, you're gonna see this. You're gonna think, oh, I'm a, I have full billow. Like, the wind is obviously with the boat, but it's not. You know how I know it's not? Because if I come back here, I can push it. And you hear that sound? Yeah. Listen for that noise. That's that's the sound of a full billow. And we're gonna be headed northwest here for a while. But if you look at the compass here, we'll pull it. That's the bitchin'. Uh, it's gonna keep pulling us north. So, it's best to set your wheel at an angle, and you'll find this as you're sailing. Just keep, as long as you're trying to keep max speed, you're going to want to watch the wind and set your wheel to be in the turn that you want. So I'm having to keep adjusting sails here. And eventually, we're going to lose wind here, I'll wait for that to happen. So I've lost the wind, and you see here, you see how that sail dropped a little bit? So I'm going to angle the sails forward because, although it's counterintuitive, you'd think a little bit of wind would be better than none, but as the general rule of thumb on this loop is either you have full bellow or you have your sails pointed forward. This is because the sloop is the fastest against the wind. Now if you're having trouble finding where the wind is, you should always raise a flag. Uh, I have an emissary flag raised, that's what that flag on the back means, but that comes with its own set of risk. What you can also do is go up to your crow's nest and equip one of the flags there, we'll show you where the wind is headed. So you've set sail, but now it's time to come to a stop, and that's not always easy without crash landing or parking two miles away from the island, so there's always kind of this nice little middle ground I found in just raising your sails halfway, raising them up a little bit, coming in slowly, angling your boat where you want it. You'll see here I finally raise them up all the way, pretty far out, but it's because the boat's going to keep drifting forward, like you'll see here, and if you're really paranoid about uh, hitting something or not getting it where you want, it's always a good idea to drop the anchor and then immediately raise it. Because it'll be a sitting duck and if someone rolls up on you and starts shooting, the time you have to raise the anchor is time they can spend killing you. Now let's say you ignore everything I just said and you make like the 2008 stock market and CRASH! <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Uh, but if you do crash, although it might make for uh, an easy landing like here, uh, you're gonna have a hole in your boat not only that, but there's a chance the bow could get stuck somewhere that you can't just turn out of. Uh, that happens a lot at outposts. So you're going to want a way to get out by just backing out manually. So you'll see here we raise the sails and raise the anchor, and that lets our boat float freely. And then you're going to take your harpoons at the front of the boat and aim them behind you. And you're going to pull on them with the right mouse button or whatever that equivalent is on controller. And you're going to alternate these two if you're alone. Ideally, if you were together with someone, you would pull together and it would tuck you out nicely. Alright, first up in our book of really niche maneuvers is the harpoon turn. You can see here, I'm just going in a straight line, I harpoon the rock and I hold R to lock it. I'm sure there's a different button for it on controller. Again, I don't really care. Uh, but you'll see, I make a full 90 degree turn here without having to adjust my sails, my wheel. Now you can use this to get away from ships during combat. I mean, you hook on to the low parts of the island, you saw you can harpoon the ground, the backing out maneuver, really anything, anywhere you can stick a harpoon is where you can turn. Now I know it's the big YouTuber thing to show you the sails on the map, but you'll see here this is a full turn with my sails all the way down. Now I'm going to raise my sails to halfway, and we'll do that same turn again. And you'll see with the sails halfway you get a much tighter turn, which is really important for ship combat. Your sails are not to be ignored. And now speaking of fighting... <laughs> so I noticed this loop in the distance, and I'm going to pull an anchor turn because I want to give him time to get closer to me. Mm. 
Now you'll see me line up broadsides here because I'm gonna try and get a broadside drive by, try to take out his mass. I'm trying to figure out something, but I see he's coming in for a ram here. Oh, so going I'm gonna pull out the chain shot. And this would be like the opportune time for a board. But because I'm alone, I end up throwing bombs at him instead. Keeps him busy, keeps him distracted, and hopefully it'll kill him, but the chances are slim. Now you see, because those chances are so slim, I'm gonna try and spin around him. I'm gonna raise my sails up to get that tighter turn again. And I'm gonna see if I can get my cannons on him. In the meantime, I'm gonna maintain my own ship, because I don't want it to be filling with water when I'm not looking. So you'll see here, I, my wheel's a little bit too tight, I'm gonna have to straighten it out a little bit, and uh, even pull back the other way. And that's okay, because he's still in panic, his sails aren't up, he's not going anywhere, so this gives me a little bit of leeway. And I see here that he's spinning, so I, uh, I panic and I start moving my shots. But that doesn't really matter, because where I'm positioned, he can't hit me, and that's enough pressure on its own for me to take time to line up shots. I can see he's trying to extinguish that fire, I'm trying to fix my wheel, and just those few holes are now enough to get him concerned. You see, I dumped this water and I see that I'm on his broadside now. And this is the perfect time to create some holes in those lower decks. Now, thankfully I stopped whiffing, and I'm trying to get some deck shots on him just so he uh, has something else to worry about. But if it weren't for properly positioning myself, I wouldn't be able to put myself in this vulnerable position. He can't fire back, and it's incredibly easy to take shots on him as a result. You'll see now here I'm going for a board, trying to make sure those holes stay holes, but <laughs> it's a little too late. So, is. is this the perfect example of it an experienced, competent is. player? No. But the idea is still the same. You know, that mask goes down, you gotta know where to position yourself. You gotta know how to manipulate that fight with not only yourself, but your brother. Now I suppose this is kind of movement related, but you want to turn off all your lamps so your movements go unnoticed. See, because that little grate right there, even the ones on the bottom, you gotta turn off because people will see it from a distance. Although the uh, giant stick pointing out of the floating thing in the water will probably give you away first. Now this is more moving around. In your ship, you can actually grab your ladders by standing on the ammo box and sticking your hand out the window there. And same thing goes for the other side, as you'll see here, you just gotta find the spot and climb. You can also move your pets 